In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. You are listening to Daily Bread Devotions with Father Eustace Yame, a selection of Don Bosco. Your word, Lord, is a lamp for my steps. Stay tuned. This is my day. This is my daily bread. Your very word spoken to me. It is Sunday, the 15th of January, 2023, second week in ordinary time. Today we are focusing on the call of each one of us. We are all called to be servants because our Lord himself is a servant. But how much of servants are we? Participating in the proclamation of the word of God for today are the following daily bread members. Zoe Farai Hove, child of Tendai and Precious Hove from Malamulele, South Africa. Text for us the first reading. Gloria Wakesho Mwasaru. Child of Atanas and Constance Mwasaru from Kisarian, Kenya. Text for us the responsorial psalm. Catherine E. Anave, child of Mr. and Mrs. Godson Anave from Kaduna State, Nigeria. Text for us the second reading. Ryan Kamau, son of Daniel Anjeri Kiongo from Nairobi, Kenya. Text for us the gospel acclamation. And proclaiming the gospel is Father Moses Oga Olai from Ogoja Diocese in Nigeria as he celebrates his birthday today. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, who govern all things both in heaven and on earth, mercifully hear the pleading of your people and bestow your peace on our times. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. First reading, I will give you as a light to the nations that my salvation may reach to the end of the earth. A reading from the book of Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 49 verse 3 and 5 to 6. The Lord said to me, You are my servant Israel, in whom I will be glorified. And now the Lord says, Who formed me from the womb to be his servant, to bring Jacob back to him? and that Israel might be gathered to him. For I am honored in the eyes of the Lord, and my God has become my strength. He says, It is too light, a thing that you should be my servant, to rise up the tribes of Jacob, and to restore the preserved of Israel. I will give you as a light to the nations, that my salvation may reach to the end of the earth. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Responsorial Psalm, Psalms chapter 40, verse 2 and 4 AB, 7 to 8 AB, 8 B to 9, then 10. Response is taken from Psalms 40, verse 8 A and 9 A. And the response is, See, I have come, Lord, to do your will. See, I have come, Lord, to do your will. See, I have come, Lord, to do your will. I waited, I waited for the Lord, and he stooped 
them to me he had my cry he put a new song into my mouth praise of a god see i have come lord to do your will see i have come lord to do your will you delight not in sacrifice and offerings but in an open you do not ask for holocaust and victim then i said see i've come see i have come lord to do your will see i have come lord to do your will in the scroll of the book it stands written of me i delight to do your will oh my god your instructions lies deep within your instructions lies deep within me see i have come lord to do your will see i have come lord to do your will your justice i have proclaimed in the great assembly my lips i have not sealed you know it all you know it all lord see i have come lord to do Second reading, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. A reading from the beginning of the first letter of St. Paul's to the Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 1 to 3. I, Paul, called by the will of God to be an apostle of Christ Jesus and our brother sustainers to the church of god which is according to those sacrificed in christ jesus called to be saints together with all those who in every place call on the name of our lord jesus christ both their lord and ours Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God became flesh and dwelt among us. To all who received him, he gave power to become children of God. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. 
Glory to you, O Lord. Chapter 1, verses 29 to 34. At that time, John saw Jesus coming towards him and said, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. This is he of whom I said, After me comes a man who ranks before me, for he was before me. I myself do not know him, but for this I came baptizing with water, that he might be revealed to Israel. And John bore witness. I saw the Spirit descend as a dove from heaven and remain on him. I myself do not know him, but he who sent me to baptize with water said to me, He on whom you see the Spirit descend and remain, this is he who baptizes with the Holy Spirit. And I have seen and have borne witness that this is the Son of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Let us begin with the first reading of today. And it is in the context of the Babylonian exile that took place between 587 BC and 537 BC. The people of Israel are in exile. And while they are in exile, they realize they are not what they thought they were. They realize that they had fallen short of the glory of God. They had strayed from the path of God. And in fact, looking at themselves in a foreign land, they felt they were good for nothing. They felt they were not actually the favored ones of God. God had abandoned them, so they thought. And with that, many of them started giving up on themselves. And when they thought God was no longer attentive to their needs, God was no longer looking at them as his favorites, prophet Isaiah came with the second song of the servant of Yahweh. The first song is found in chapter 42, and the second song is found in chapter 49 that we are reading today. And in chapter 42, it is a person who is addressed. He is talking about the person, but this time he's talking about the Israelites. You are my servant, Israel, in whom I will be glorified. Eh? Glorified in somebody who is nobody? Glorified in somebody who has given up hope? Glorified in somebody who is despised, disregarded, seen as a slave in Babylon? Yes! God is going to be glorified in the despised Israel. Isn't it saying something about you? You think you are good for nothing. You think you have nothing much to offer. The society has indeed punched you from all sides and you feel you don't have what it takes to work for God. You feel you are not going anywhere because you have been exposed, because a lot of things have been spoken against you and you just feel you are not good enough. You know what God is telling you right now? He is going to be glorified through you. Meaning, he is going to be made big through you. You may be thinking you are good for nothing. For God, you are a perfect material of what is going to achieve in you. We are in ordinary time strengthening our faith, hope, and charity. And we want to say that strengthening of faith, that strengthening of hope will only come when we reaffirm who we are and who we can become in God. I am telling you, don't disregard yourself. Israel thought nothing was going to come out of her, but God said, I am going to make you a light of the nations. I am going to make you bring light in the darkness of men and women's lives. That is how God operates. You are able to witness to yourself maybe by now, how you thought nothing good can come out of your life, but God raised you up and started making use of you to become his true instrument. 
He just wants your availability. He just wants you to say, yes, Lord, use me. Yes, Lord, I thought I was useless. Yes, Lord, because I found myself in prostitution. Because I found myself destroying other people's homes and everybody knows about it. I think I'm good for nothing. God is saying he's going to change that. He's going to make you the light of the nations. Is going to make out of you a perfect material for the economy of our salvation. Just don't underrate yourself. You are good and you are going to be good for something. Look at Paul in the second reading of today. Paul is writing to the Corinthians. The Corinthians is writing to had issues with Paul. The Corinthians is writing to are uh, the people who even didn't like him much. In fact, they said he doesn't even know how to speak. And he's about to say something. And so he starts with a greeting here. From Paul, called by the will of God to be an apostle of Jesus Christ. And I suppose they might have said, wait a minute, we know the list of apostles. We know they were 12 and your name was not anywhere there. Why are you calling yourself an apostle when you persecuted the church, when you wanted to destroy the church? Yes, Paul is presenting to us a God who indeed works in human weaknesses and achieves something big through us. He does not only present himself as an apostle. No, he also presents somebody else. The somebody else that he presents is Sostenes. If you remember very well from the Bible about Sostenes, this is the man that we find in Acts chapter 18 verse 16. The man, together with other Jews, dragged Paul to court, but things had gone badly for him, and he had been severely beaten by his own people. It seems he did not present his case well, and his own people beat him up because it ended up to be an only prosecutor. Sostenes, the synagogue official, was beaten, and that was done in full view of the tribunal. What an embarrassment, what brokenness. But this sustenance becomes the co-partner. The man who thought he had become useless, the man who thought he was no longer anything in society, becomes a partner in apostleship with Paul. And he's writing to the Corinthians to tell them, listen, this is how God operates. He made me an apostle, though I was persecuting Christians. He made sustenance, a co-worker, though he was even beaten in front of everybody else. If it happens to some of us, beaten in the way people expose us, somebody says something about us and we start feeling ashamed we may end up even locking ourselves up and saying we are not going to participate anymore in anything that has to do with God but you know what God is going to make use of you when you just say Lord despite what has happened in my life I am available make use of me I am your servant and I am ready to act as your true servant in anything that you ask me to do. I don't care what others are going to say about me. I'm going to work for you because I want to be a light to the nations. I want to bring back others to you just as Christ himself did. The gospel passage of today on this second Sunday in ordinary time is taken from the Gospel of John. Now, understand this. Every second Sunday in ordinary time, we take the Gospel of John. But I told you that in this year, year A, we are dealing with the Gospel of St. Matthew. Why are we not then treating the Gospel of St. Matthew today? It is because we have three years 
ye a b and c ye a is for saint matthew ye b is for saint mark ye c is for saint luke it means since we have only ye a b c then the fourth gospel the gospel of saint john doesn't have any of the years we have only three years of our liturgical cycle and so in order to accommodate saint john we have him as our guest gospel throughout the year we have saint john every second sunday in ordinary time Today we are taking being second Sunday in ordinary time year A we are taking from John chapter 1 verse 29 to 34 next year year B on second Sunday we are going to continue from chapter 1 verse 34 where we are ending we will continue from chapter 1 verse 35 to verse 42 and then we are going to jump verse 43 to 51 because this passage has already been covered during the Christmas period and we are going to start with chapter 2 verse 1 to 11 the wedding at Cana on the second Sunday in 2025 oh isn't that something for us to understand and to tell us that the gospel of John comes in every year and in fact by the end of these three years we will have covered the whole gospel of John as a guest gospel throughout our liturgical calendar and today the focus is on the Lamb of God John is standing and he sees Jesus coming and he says behold the Lamb of God who is he he's not introduced as the king of the world no John introduces him as the Lamb of God where is this coming from this is coming from the Exodus experience he is that lamb that was sprinkled on the doors of the people of Israel for them to be spared from death. So he is the lamb of God in this regard. He has come to spare us from death. He has come to save us from anything that destroys our lives. And so is not a king coming to enjoy his life. No, he is the lamb. He is somebody to be used for our own comfort. And if we understand him as the Lamb of God, then we understand whom we are following. We are following the Lamb of God. We are following a Lamb of sacrifice. And if I am following a Lamb of sacrifice, I must be a man and a woman of sacrifice in my life. Where I show that my life is meant for other people, that is charity. Where I show that I am meant to bring hope to other people, to bring faith in the lives of other people. That is the call we have. And if we follow the lamb, therefore we are going to be lambs to other people. We are going to remove our selfishness in our lives. As a parent at home, I am going to spend more time with my children. I am going to spend more time with my spouse because I am called to be a lamb, to forget about my own needs and focus on the needs of other people. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end amen the lord be with you and with your spirit and may almighty god bless you the father and the son and the holy spirit amen blessed sunday to you thanks be to god this is my daily bread your very life is bread Spoken to me and I I'm desperate for you and I I'm 
This is my day. 